Good evening and welcome to Know Your Rights. This is the show where you hear directly from lawyers who break down the law and explain the rights of citizens on common legal issues that confront Belizeans on a regular basis. Tonight, we will be discussing defamation, libel, and slander, and the importance for you to know how you are protected if someone unlawfully tarnishes your reputation. Joining us to give insight on this significant topic is attorney Payal Ganwani from the law firm of Esteban Pereira and Company. Good evening and welcome Payal. Hi, good night. This is a interesting topic and I think it's a hot topic at this time. And um, yesterday I was speaking to someone from my church who was asking, well, what are you going to do on the show tomorrow night? And I said defamation. And her response was, but Belize not protect nobody with defamation. <laughs> Quite the contrary, actually. So, what is defamation, libel and slander? Well, defamation itself is a tort that protects a person's reputation. So, essentially, it consists of any false communication, whether written words or spoken, that harms a person's reputation or um, it decreases the opinions of that person in another person's regard. Okay, so the consequence of whatever is said or written is reputational damage then? Correct. So Correct. that's what we're looking at. And you said a person, but does it necessarily have to be an individual or can it be a company, an institution? It could be either. Um, in law, a company is recognized as a legal person, so it could be any um, damage to the reputation of a company as well. Um, okay. That's actually more severe since a business um, could be severely affected if you say something that causes them to lose customers or something. Okay. And break down these technical terms for us. Defamation, libel, and slander. What? Um, yeah. Libel and slander, a defamatory statement can be either libel or slander. Libel okay. is a defamatory statement in a permanent form. So most often written words in a newspaper article or a book or a pamphlet or email. Oh, okay. It could even include photographs, paintings, cartoons. Oh. Um, slander, on the other hand, is in a more temporary form, so principally spoken words or gestures. Uh, an easy way for the public to remember it is it said that libel is addressed to the eye and slander to the ear. Okay, that's interesting. And But the question would be then, in terms of, at least with slander, the one addressed to the ear, we have a culture of just gossip. <laughs> right. So, in a sense, slander happens quite often in casual settings. So, is how, what is the distinction with libel and slander? Well, the most important distinction between the two is that libel is actionable per se. What this means in a layman terms is that the law presumes that some damage to that person's reputation flow from the mere fact that it was published. Or written. Okay. Slander, on the, on the other hand, to be actionable, a person would have to prove some special damage resulted from the defamatory statement. So, in other words, that person would have to prove that as a result of the statement, he or she lost their job. Mm -hmm. There are certain situations, though, where slander may be actionable per se. For example, if you say that um, X committed a crime which is punishable by imprisonment. Mm -hmm such as like theft, okay, or okay. if you say that X has a contagious disease because this would cause persons to shun him if he has you know, any venereal disease okay. or so forth, as well as our act goes as far as protecting any imputations against a woman about unchastity or adultery. Okay. Um, and of course, the most important thing, any imputation that affects uh, profession professional or business reputation. So, for example, if you say that a doctor is incompetent or mm -hmm. that a lawyer knows no law, that may be regarded as defamatory. Okay. So, in terms of the, back to the reputational damage then, why is it important for constitutions to protect this? And also, does our constitution protect against this? Um, yes, equally as important as the right to freedom of expression that everybody likes to rely on yes. is a person's right to their reputation. Okay. People need to be aware that the right to freedom of expression doesn't give them an unfettered license to make any attack on, a moral, on the moral character and integrity of a person. Whether that person is a political party or not, the law has to 
strike a balance between the two. Okay. And so you mentioned that you have to show that it damaged you in some way to the courts. So it's not necessarily that you just not like what somebody said about you or so. You have to provide that evidence that you, you're harmed? Yeah, correct. Like I said, some were liable and the certain exceptions for slander is concerned, which are actionable per se. The law presumes that some damage fall, um, flows from that. But where it's just simply slander, like you say, where you say people in Belize like to gossip, you know, uh -huh. then you would have to prove, like I said, um, that as a result of the slander, you lost your job or it caused you some actual pecuniary loss and not necessarily that, oh, you lost a couple of friends. That's not sufficient. <laughs> That's not enough. Yes. <laughs> some friends on Facebook. Yeah, it, and, it can't uh -huh. be that you lost a selective group of friends. It has to be the community at general thinks that way about you. Okay, shun you in some, in yes. some way for, yes. for some reason. So speaking of Facebook, want to get into some of the sources, the popular sources where we're seeing um, some possible claims coming up. Um, can Facebook be used as a source? Yes, of course, any defamatory statement published on Facebook, mm -hmm. you can commence a action for libel for that. Um, actually, recently there was a decision out of Trinidad and Tobago where the High Court in the case of Burke had to deal with an action for libel um, as a result of certain statements posted about the claimant by, by their neighbor on okay. Facebook. Okay. And the court, it, it's pretty interesting, it's a pretty interesting read because mm -hmm. the court actually dealt with the actual aspect of publishing it to other persons and you know, Facebook has a very wide reach. Yes. So the court yes. had to examine how many people did that post actually reach to and it was quite a significant amount, especially with the share feature or the like feature. You know, you're able to see, yes. hey, everybody reacted to this. Yeah. So that so. not just your friends, that your friends, friends, and exactly. Your friends, friends. Especially, um, I've noticed that people like to post something and then tag several persons in it. So you know, that reaches to a further group of people because that's not only to my friends, but if you have your settings set to share with the friends of my friends. The public. <laughs> the public at large <laughs> yes. really sees all of those posts. So I have a claim, or I think I might have a claim. What other evidence I need apart from, let's say, the, 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 maybe a snapshot of the, uh, of the statement said itself or a recording or so? Um, well, you would just have to prove the elements. So you have to prove that the words themselves are defamatory in the sense that they tend to lower your reputation um, in the minds of right-thinking individuals in society generally. Okay. You have to prove that the words refer to you. Okay. And you would actually have to prove as well that um, the words, sorry, you'd have to prove that they refer to you and you'd have to prove that they cause you some injury as well. Some, some type of harm. Yes. Oh, and of course, the main thing, you'd have to prove that they are published to somebody other than you. Like if somebody sends you a text messaging, text message, sorry, uh -huh. telling you something insulting, that's not necessarily defamation because it has to be communicated to someone else. Oh, okay, okay. It's, remember, yeah. it's a tort that protects your reputation, reputation with others. Other people, yeah. yeah. With, with just you and the person that are just beef. Yeah. That, that, <laughs> that are not defamation. Correct, right. correct. But we'll get in a little bit more into the sources as well as the persons involved for these types of claims, but we need to take a very short commercial break. So we'll take a a quick break and then continue our discussion on defamation, libel and slander. Welcome back to Know Your Rights. I am Khadija Usher. And our guest tonight is attorney Payal Ganwani. And we are discussing defamation, libel, and slander, and why you should know your rights if someone tries to unlawfully tarnish your reputation. So we began discussing what is necessary. You say you have to prove that you receive damage on your reputation and so. And I want to go into the possible claimants of the reputational damage. In terms of you were speaking of if an individual felt that her reputation was damaged. But 
if this person is in is a public figure then is it is out there in the public does the same laws really apply to a public figure versus a private citizen um well it depends if definitely if you make a def make a defamatory statement ag against a politician they are like every other person in the community they have a right to go to the court to seek okay. damage to their reputation yeah um, there are certain defenses which would apply, however. Um, for, for example, if it's a fair comment on the way that they're carrying out their political um, function, then, but to just say, oh, John Doe is a hustler or a thief, that's mm -hmm. definitely defamatory. Okay. It, that's interesting because you say a fair comment. <laughs> so does it necessarily mean that if it's if you can prove that it's true then it's okay or <laughs> well actually justification that's ah. its own defense that's simply that if you say something yes. and they bring an action against you and you can prove that it's true you defeat the claim right away okay but if you rely on that defense yes and the court rules that that defense fails because you haven't properly proved it mm -hmm. then what that does is that inflates the amount of damages that the court will award against you because the court treats it sort of like a aggravation to the original injury that you already caused to the person's reputation by uh -huh. saying the statement, yes. then claiming that it's true, and then we find out that it's not actually true. Oh, okay, okay. So for uh, publishing, publishing it and it not being true. Correct. <laughs> they, they give you aggravated damages. Double hit. Yeah. But what would you say then to those who say, but like people like politicians, that are the ones who put themselves out there, put themselves in at the spotlight. And so they, in their uh, line of trade, they should expect criticism um, from the public and, and to encounter this type of behavior then. Well, actually, you see, you can, like I said, you can make statements which are considered a fair comment as a matter of public interest. So uh -huh. this goes hand in hand with your freedom of expression towards these people, but you have to prove that it's your honest opinion on a matter of legitimate concern. You can't just say X, Y, Z, you know? There's, there are several elements that you would have to prove for that defense of fair comment. Mm. Um, likewise, with qualified privilege, it's pretty similar, but um, going back to fair comment, actually, you'd have to prove that it's actually a comment and not an assertion of fact. Okay. You'd have to prove that the matter is one of public interest. Okay. You'd have to prove that um, there was no malice behind you stating it, mm -hmm. that it was honest. Mm -hmm. So there are several elements. It's, it's quite a tough hurdle. It is. It, and fair comment is one that the publishers in newspaper like to rely on to try and mm -hmm. defeat any defamatory statement that they may make. Mm -hmm. And I was just I was just going to ask about uh, like newspapers or radio shows and so those are also um, they can also be uh, claims can also be brought against them. Yes, definitely. Um, they're held to the same standard. Actually, interestingly enough, if defamatory words are in an article published by a newspaper, mm -hmm. The writer of the article, the publisher, the editor, the printer, even the news vendor selling it on the street can be held responsible. Oh, because okay. Okay. with defamation, yeah. every rep repetition is a fresh offense, which is a fresh cause of action. Oh, wow. And in terms of damages, the assessment of the damage done to your reputation that the courts do, that's a very difficult process, isn't it? Well, yes, because like I said, for those actions that are actionable per se, where the court just assumes damages, that is known as general damages. The amount of general damages, it's in the discretion of the court, but there are certain factors that they would look at to determine how much should be awarded in a given situation. Um, for example, they look at the nature of the defamation, the extent of how it was published and the circumstances, meaning okay. how many people it reached to, how was it published, if it was on Facebook, it was a book. Or, mm -hmm. um, they look at the, the behavior of the defendant from the mm -hmm. time the defamatory material was published to, mm -hmm. to the judgment itself, okay. if he or she has given an apology. Mm -hmm. um, they look at whether it was maliciously said they also look at the status of the person, like you said, if it's a political figure or if it's a normal individual. Different things come into play at that time. So what, I mean, what we're seeing here versus what we're actually seeing on Facebook, in the newspapers, on the media, especially at this time when we're approaching the, uh, the municipal elections, <laughs> is, is that 
there is a lot of dirty comments going out there, a lot of seemingly personal attacks happening out there. So what I want to ask is really how seriously does the court take uh, claims of defamation then? And why, why aren't more going to, because we're seeing a lot. Yeah, well, there, there are actually a lot of claims for defamation. It might just be that the public isn't okay. aware of it. Um, especially when this political battle is going on, there are certain statements which um, normal individuals that aren't lawyers may see as a political propaganda, but mm -hmm. it is actually defamatory of the other party. And mm -hmm. so those matters are taken to the court. The, the, the court takes it very seriously. Like I said, you can get damages for any statement made that severely affects your reputation. Mm -hmm. um, if the defamatory statement is so heinous, the court could even give in rare circumstances exemplary damages. Um, for example, if you publish something just to make a profit, even though okay. it's defamatory, then, but exemplary damage is very rare. Aggravated damages is given in the situation, like I mentioned, where if you relied on justification and that defense failed, or um, if you maliciously posted mm -hmm. the the defamatory statement on Facebook or in a book or... Okay, okay, yeah. Well, when we get back, we just want to go a little bit more into the topic, but we need to take one more sure. short break. <laughs> and then we'll be right back to continue our discussion on defamation, libel, and slander. Welcome back to Know Your Rights. I am Khadija Usher, and our guest tonight is attorney Payal Ganwani. And we are discussing defamation, libel, and slander, and why you should know your rights if someone tries to unlawfully tarnish your reputation. So Payal, actually during that break just now, uh, somebody WhatsApp to me very quickly, a screenshot on uh, Facebook and showing um, a uh, story where somebody posted about a young lady and some very sexually derogatory uh, information claiming about her on it. And it was interesting because right before the break, you said a lot of people don't know that certain things they put up there might seem to be comments or just propaganda, but they, it can actually be held against them. Yeah, definitely. So what would you say to the viewers who really want to understand that line between them just speaking freely and them venturing into the defamation territory, for, at least for Facebook purposes? Um, honestly, the only thing that I could tell them is be very, very cautious about what you post because um, what is defamatory, many statements can be seen as defamatory. Mm -hmm. Anything you post, I mean, posting about the, the female's um, promiscuity or whatever, that could be seen as defamatory. I told you our act goes as far as protecting any imputation made against a girl or a woman in regards to unchastity or um, adultery. So honestly, my only comment to them would be very, to be very careful about what you post. And in terms of, uh, we know that in, in certain different types of cases, there's a statute of limitation on um, how long you could make a claim. For defamation, is there a statute of limitation? Um, yes, like every other tort, it has to be, it can't be brought after the expiration of six years. But honestly, if somebody tarnishes your reputation, don't sit on it get out there, take action, do something about it, because the longer that stays out there, the more it could get to more people. Oh, okay. And in terms of you getting reparations or redress for your claim, do you have to go through the court system? Um, it honestly it depends on what you want. If you want damages, then yes, the court system is the way to go. But um, we've dealt with several clients who simply just want an apology or want the defamatory material removed from wherever it's published. So this can be achieved by simply sending them a demand letter. Then they publish a um, public apology and some people are very satisfied with that. Mm. But if you want actual, I mean, in the letter itself, you can ask for the damages, but I don't okay. think, <laughs> I don't think somebody will willingly give you the damages, right? Okay. Um, okay. But if you want the actual damages, then yes, you might have to okay. seek court action. Yeah. Um, in terms of redress, you can also go to the court for an injunction to stop 
the publishing of that material immediately because I mean, you know, cer certain times when somebody gets a good story, they publish one article about it yes. and then another one. And okay. so okay. you can get an injunction to stop yeah. all yeah. Um, defamatory okay. materials such as that. Yeah. But that's interesting. Some people might just be, because it's reputation, satisfied with just the public knowing the truth that the, well, this, this wasn't true or, or, some, or something like that. Payal, what would you want to emphasize to the public your final words on defamation, slander, and libel? Um, given the most recent case with Facebook, yeah. that's what I'd want to tell the public. Even, even the youths, they need to stop posting certain things that they post. It's, yeah. They take Facebook for granted, but Facebook is a medium which makes all of us publishers. We can all be journalists on Facebook. So yeah. be very, very careful about what you post about people on that, on all social media. Twitter, Instagram, everything. Remember, photographs can be defamatory as well. Okay, okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. And unfortunately, we have come to the end of our show for tonight. Thank you, Payal, for joining us and providing important information on tonight's topic. Next week, we will be joined by another guest attorney who will also break down your rights on another exciting topic. Tonight's episode of Know Your Rights repeats at 1 p.m. on Sunday on Channel 7, and it will also be available for your viewing on Facebook and YouTube. Thank you for watching and good night.